All right, welcome back to part 9 yeah, of uh, this chapter 18. We are looking at uh, solving the problem of factoring. Yeah? Uh, the last slip ended here, the effective interest rate, yeah? computing the effective interest rate. So here, uh, the effective interest rate is computed by looking at what is paid yeah, or foregone in excess, yeah, which is later, excess uh, later at the end of the term compared to or divided by what is received now, yeah, what you get now. Yeah. So basically this is uh, what is foregone yeah. by selling the receivables to the factor, you lose 2%, two, two that is what we mean by foregone. Yeah. You lose 2% of this 2 million. Yeah. Alright, and then uh, <coughs> this would be foregone late now, yeah. this foregone now, okay. Uh, and then at the later time, okay, the uh, um, you would have collected two million yeah, if you had not sold this receivables to the factor. Okay, so that is what is meant by here yeah, in excess later at the end of the term, compared to what is received now. Yeah, this is what you receive now. Yeah? You don't receive two million, but you uh, receive two percent less yeah, from this. Yeah? So one minus two percent multiplied by two million. Alright, so therefore you can actually uh, cancel off these two. Yeah? So this is the rate actually. This is the period rate. Yeah? 2% is the uh, uh, cost of factoring. Yeah? But you divide this by 1 minus 2%, you get 2.04. It's more than 2%. Yeah? You know this because it is discounted here. Yeah? You pay this 2% now rather than later. Therefore, it is more than 2%. If this 2% is foregone at the end, yeah, at the later state, yeah, then this will only be 2%, yeah, because it's 2% divided by 1 minus 2%. This 2% that you lose now, okay, therefore it is higher than 2%, yeah, it is 2.04%. That is the period rate, yeah, but that is only for one month. The effective annual rate, yeah, know that the rate uh, above is only applicable for one month, yeah, this is one month. Because the 2 million, the average collection period is 30 days. Okay, so you can actually uh, uh, sell yeah, or factor the receivables uh, 2 million yeah, every month. Okay, therefore you can do it 12 times. Yeah? So M, remember M, the term that we used in uh, chapter 6. Okay, the number of times interest is compounded in a year. So M will be 12 here because there are 12 months. Yeah? It's compounded once a month. Therefore, there are 12 times the interest will be compounded yeah, here. Therefore, here the annual percentage rate, yeah, you, can, uh, you can compute the effective annual rate. But before that, yeah, let's try the APR first. So, APR is simply R multiplied by M. Yeah? M is 12. Therefore, this 2.04% yeah, multiplied by 12, you get 24.49, yeah, almost 24.5%. This is an annual rate, yeah? This is the APR, yeah? But we are not so interested in the APR. We want the effective annual rate or EAR, yeah? Now, the EAR is simply this, the R plus with 1. This is the R, okay, from here, R, R plus 1. Then you raise this to the power of 12, yeah? Because you compound this 12 times, yeah? The, this is one period, one month. So, therefore, you compound this 12 times. Okay, so that you get for one year, then you minus one, yeah, in order to get the interest rate, yeah. So this is the effective annual rate, which is twenty four point, uh, sorry, twenty seven point four three percent, yeah. So it seems very small here, two percent, but on a yearly basis, yeah, it is quite high, yeah. When you take compounding into effect or into consideration, the cost becomes quite high, yeah. So it is twenty seven point four three percent. That is the cost uh, uh, that the company will incur if it uh, sells the receivables yeah, to a factor. If it uses factoring to do the financing, the cost of the financing is 27.43% per year. Yeah? And that is quite high. Okay, So that is how you compute the cost of factoring. Okay, And the formula for factoring, let me just bring it down slightly, is simply this. Yeah? This is the R, okay. Now this R is not the period rate, and this is the EAR for the cost of uh, factoring. Yeah? So that is equals to one plus. This is D. This is the 
a discount here yeah? discount for the factor the cost of discount yeah? or the cost uh, the discount factor for factoring yeah? uh, so here in this case is two percent okay so this is d divided by one minus d yeah? so this is the r here the period rate then you add one you raise this to the power of 12 yeah, in this case uh, this is as sales divided by receivables yeah? you can take this to be average receivables this will be the sales or credit sales yeah? so this s divided by r will uh, indicate the m yeah? how many times uh, the receivables can be factored in a year okay so then the minus one yeah? so this is the formula to compute the eAR for factory okay Alright, let's move on to the next topic. Alright, now, <coughs> having considered the various uh, short-term borrowing sources, yeah, or sources of short-term borrowing, now we re-look really at the cash budget. Yeah? So, if you look at this row, okay, we want to see the cash budget again, okay, this we have seen earlier, yeah, this is the beginning cash balance, okay, 80, Okay, this, this was the beginning cash balance for quarter one. The net cash inflow yeah, is 108. Now for this part of the cash budget, yeah, you cannot go row by row. Yeah? You have to go column. Yeah? You have to start with the first cell, then you go finish the first column, then you move to the next column. Because the next column, okay, the column number two will depend on the outcome of column number one. Yeah? So you cannot go row by row yeah? like what we did earlier. Yeah? The earlier part of the cash budget, we can go row by row yeah, because uh, one quarter's outcome okay, will not affect the next quarter's outcome. Yeah? But here it will, yeah, therefore you need to go column by column. Yeah? All right. So we start with the first column. The beginning cash balance was given to be 80 million. Yeah? Uh, and we computed earlier, this is from the previous example, 108 million net cash inflow. Yeah? This includes cash receipt minus cash payments yeah so a net cash inflow of 108 million dollars all right there is no new short borrowing why because your minimum balance is 50 yeah? you want 50 these two yeah is uh, very much higher than 50 there's no new borrowing yeah uh, interest on short term investment we assume there is none here right for the moment we'll come back to that later yeah and then you include yeah, these three rows are added and yeah, these three lines or three rows are added okay so you have no short-term borrowing interest on short-term investment if you have short-term investment and short-term borrowing repay yeah, if you repay the short-term borrowing yeah all right now here it is shown as zero yeah but but it is not actually zero uh, the information given uh, in this case yeah, in this particular case is that any cash uh, surplus yeah? it means beyond the 50 minimum yeah, that you want to maintain okay will be invested at uh, interest rate okay short term interest rate of 2% okay per annum okay and this is compounded per quarter yeah? compounded per quarter therefore here this 2% is APR yeah? know that yeah? this 2% APR but you need the R yeah, for each quarter because these are quarters. Yeah? So you need the period rate. Yeah? Period here means quarterly rate. You need the quarterly rate and 2% divided by 4 is the quarterly rate. Yeah? So it's 0.5%. So this is the interest rate that you earn for one quarter. In excess, yeah, that means 80. This is what you have, beginning cash balance. Okay, uh, Minus this 50. Yeah? Uh, will be your excess cash balance at the beginning of the year okay so and this will be uh, excess throughout the quarter the whole of the quarter yeah? we don't include this in that cash inflow we assume that this cash inflow occurs at the end of the quarter right this is at the end yeah so therefore from the beginning yeah? we take the beginning cash flow minus the minimum yeah? so you have 30 dollars 30 million dollars uh, in excess surplus so and this will earn 0.5% interest per quarter so therefore it becomes 0.15 million dollars yeah? because we round to the nearest million 
Okay, we put that as zero. Yeah, leave it as zero. All right, and you're told that the ending cash balance. Okay, you can compute this plus this the ending cash balance minus the minimum cash balance. You have cumulative surplus. Yeah, that is this minus this is a surplus. Yeah, we have computed this earlier. Yeah. All right. Now since you have got one hundred and thirty-eight surplus, there is no need to change. Okay. Therefore, this ending cash balance becomes the beginning cash balance for the second quarter. All right. Now you have net cash outflow, yeah? not inflow, but outflow of one hundred and seventy-six for the second quarter. Therefore. Here, if you add these two, you have less. Yeah? Ending cash balance becomes 50, right? Minimum cash balance is 50. So you need to borrow, yeah? you need to borrow $38 million. Yeah? Because this plus this, or this minus this, yeah? you get only 12. You want 50, so therefore you need to borrow $38, yeah? $38 million. All right. Interest on short-term investment. How do you get this one value here? Yeah, this is 188. This is the beginning cash balance minus the minimum cash balance. Yeah, at the beginning of the quarter you had 188 million. You will have yeah. You forecast that you will have 188 million dollars minus the 50 million minimum cash balance that you want. So you have 138 million yeah? excess, and this. You multiply with 0.5% interest rate per quarter, yeah? all right, and you get 0.69, and you round this to the nearest million, you get one million here. Yeah? It's it is supposed to be 0.69, but it's rounded to the nearest whole million, therefore it is one million. Yeah? Okay, that is why it is one here. Yeah? All right. Now, because you borrow 38 million, yeah? because you borrow 38 million. Your change in short term debt, yeah? beginning short term debt is zero because there was no borrowing earlier. Since you borrowed 38 million this uh, quarter, so the change there will be an increase. Ending, yeah? so it will be this plus this to get the ending short term debt. All right, now we move on to the third quarter. Yeah? The third quarter, the beginning cash balance will be 30. This is based on this ending cash balance is 30, yeah? because this. Uh, minus this plus this yeah, will be 50. Yeah? Right. So this 50 will be the beginning cash balance for the third quarter. And your net cash inflow will be 26 yeah? positive yeah? cash inflow. Yeah? All right. Now, uh, what have you got here? Yeah? Here, this is negative 1. Yeah? This is uh, interest on short term loan. Yeah? Because you borrowed 38 million here. 38 million for borrowing uh, the interest rate is 12 percent per annum apr yeah why negative because it's a cost it's not an earning so it's a cost okay but this is the apr you need the uh, period rate yeah the quarterly rate so you divide this by four you get the interest rate per quarter so this will be uh, uh, 2.5 percent yeah 2.25 percent Therefore, you multiply with 38 million, you get negative 114, and this is rounded to negative 1. And yeah? that is why it's negative 1 here. Yeah? Alright, therefore, it is 50 million, uh, beginning cash balance, net cash inflow is 26. You repay, yeah? because you need to maintain a minimum of 50, yeah? ending cash balance will be 50. You don't want to have more than 50, yeah? if you have some borrowing you want to repay the borrowing yeah? so you pay repay 25 million okay so you pay as much as you can without going below the minimum cash balance yeah? so 25 million will be repaid so you will still have a minimum cash balance of 50 now you had 38 million yeah? beginning short term debt from previous uh, quarter this will be here you repay 25 million so you still have 13 million yeah uh, loan uh, outstanding for the third quarter. Now for the fourth quarter, this will be the beginning cash balance from here. All right. Then the net cash inflow is 122 million. This is given or taken from the previous slide. Yeah. Okay. Then what else? Yeah. You will have some amount of cost. Yeah. For borrowing, you have 13 million dollars loan here. You multiply with 
2.25% here. 